All right, guys, so today we uh, stole the GT350R from Andrew. Mr. Hobble said that uh, we need to put some braking miles on the Mantic that they just installed the other night. So we gladfully took the car. We're going to just drive around, do the daily cycle that they want you to, going through all the gears nice and slow, making sure that you're braking in the clutch properly. However, we're gonna throw a little curveball in here. We're gonna play a prank on Andrew right now. I shouldn't jinx myself, but we're gonna prank him by telling him we got pulled over because he was very, very clear. Don't get pulled over with the car because as you guys know, I have bad luck. I get pulled over doing some dumb shit sometimes. So let's go ahead and do it. And you can like switch between the phone and my face. Hello? Yo, we have, we have a really big problem. What? I'm so f sorry, dude. I'm so sorry. I need you to, uh, what are you doing? What? I just got pulled over on I-4 doing 140. Why? Why? I was I was trying to break in the car. No, you didn't. Yes, I did, dude. I need you to come. Can you come bail me out? I don't know if they're arresting me or not, but I told them the car was yours and they're not happy. Andrew. Can you... Can you I need you to come get me out of trouble right now. Stop. <laughs> so, uh, Andrew uh, told me to break the clutch in. And what better way to break the car in than a nice little journey to uh, Steak and Shake? What do you think? And uh, if any of you are looking to purchase a uh, GT350R, we have a nice yellow one here down here at a dealership. Contact me on Instagram at Eight Gilmore. We'll get you taken care of. The downshifts in this thing are gnarly. Ready? It is hot, let's get this thing started. Woo. So I did drive it this morning to physical therapy, but uh, yeah, she runs good. And um, this is the second time I've driven it since we did the clutch, so let's go ahead and get rolling. All right guys, so we are back in our 2018 GT350R. If you guys are new to the channel and don't know about this car, uh, we picked it up back in March um, around all the COVID uh, stuff was starting and uh, we brought it back from Ohio. We got this from our friend Don. Um, this car is for Ashley, um, so I can be out driving the GT500, she can be driving this car, and we can kind of just do some really cool car stuff together. Unfortunately, we haven't been able to do the dream of that quite yet because coronavirus and then also the GT500 has been down and then we came back up this was broken and then we broke the GT500 again it happens um, but there's a lot of really fun stuff coming for the GT500 and it should be awesome um, so the clutch went out on this when Ashley went to go make a pass at the drag strip it's very very common for that stock clutch to let go uh, when drag racing especially with boost so if you don't know we have a Whipple 2.9 liter Gen 4 Super supercharger on this car it made 786 wheel horsepower SAE smoothing 5 um, it has a 3.625 pulley on it dual fuel pump boosters kooks long tubes a Borla attack cat back um, we're actually probably gonna be changing up the cat back uh, Ashley really likes Corsa so we're probably gonna be doing some Corsa long tubes and a Corsa extreme cat back um, this cat back is actually active 
but it is locked open because you tend to have a lot of issues with the uh, flaps on the exhaust uh, with some boost on these cars. Um, Lewis had the issue, Don had the issue a few times. Um, pretty much anyone with a boosted at GT350 pretty much has that uh, problem with it. So right now we are on, let's see, mile 36 of 500 of our break-in period. Um, we're gonna be doing a little bit of highway driving today and you typically want a lot of city driving but if you are doing some highway driving, trying to break in a clutch, you can uh, do a lot more shifting, which will help, uh, you know, break in that clutch. So like right here, we're in fourth or we're in fifth, going into fourth, and you just go down to third. You know, do a lot of rev matching, and we can rev it up. Uh, we're not gonna get into boost. And then we're just going to go ahead and shift up. Fifth gear, go get up to speed. You drive the car pretty normally. You just don't want to get into any, uh, you know, excessive abuse on the clutch. You know, no hard shifting. Um, you really don't want to get on it in gear. I've seen a lot of people have failures very quickly with these clutches because they just put them in and just hammered the thing. I can tell that these clutches definitely have a braking period. Um, it's important. So definitely, you know, you want to be doing a lot of uh, clutch motions and uh, start, uh, stop and start too, you know. But even on the highway, you know, you can go down to fifth gear, you know, and then back to six. You can do a few different things, you know, kind of go up and down, you know, shift more than you normally would. You know, don't be lazy about it, and it'll really help that clutch break in. Um, I definitely noticed that this car, uh, or these clutches, um, you'll start to feel some chatter around 100, 200 miles. It'll be very, very aggressive. And then if you just continue to drive it smooth, it'll continue to get smoother and smoother as you approach that 500 mile interval. And you'll actually pretty much know when it's broken in because it'll just get really nice and smooth. So, unfortunately, no poles today in the GT350R. Um, some future plans, I think Ashley wants to turn up the power. Now, I think the power is like absolutely freaking perfect at nearly 800 wheel horsepower on 93 octane. Um, but there's a chance we'll probably put some bigger injectors in here, so probably some 1,000 cc's, and uh, turn it up to probably uh, 900 or so wheel horsepower on E85. You know, Palm Beach Dino tunes this thing, they do an awesome job. So uh, we're gonna go pick up Lewis uh, here pretty soon. And if you guys have any questions, uh, go ahead and leave them in the comment section down below. We're gonna be having a lot more videos with this. We're gonna be taking a trip with this up uh, north and uh, it should be a lot of fun to drive this thing. He's gonna be coming with us. Uh oh, strapped. Make sure we don't get robbed. No carjacking. No carjacking. Oh, no carjacking. <laughs> <clears throat> what you think? The R is back, bro. It's back. I love it. Yes. What the hell did you do? Well, it's <clears throat> first of all, there is a lot of lock Loctite on it, so coming off it was very hard, hard to come off. Yeah, I can imagine. So it might have damaged the threads initially. Oh, okay. um, so Zach took it off, and then uh, we were just finishing everything up, and Zach was tightening it to to hopefully get tight, and then it just went. Boop. <laughs> oh my god. So it's. Yeah, um, it's loose for one, which is annoying. It yeah. looks terrible, and you know, obviously, we just glued this on so that it's at least there. But I don't mind. I would actually like the stock uh, shift knob. I just need to find one. Yeah, I sold mine right away when I got the other one. Oh yeah. Yeah. Somebody bought but, it. And we got uh, 45 miles on it. Can't play. No. He wants to play, but we can't play. <laughs> We have a clutch to break in. <laughs> he's, got his, he's got his girl up. <laughs> All right. He's got his girl with him. That's funny. I want to see him take off. Sucks. Oh man. No 
playtime. Oh! What was that? Sounds like something hit the bottom of the car. All right, so status update. Um, the same issue I had before with the right side, which is actually the reason why we're going down to see Tyler anyways. Um, it seems like the left side broke and it's flapping underneath the car. Um, and then I think it finally broke off and it shorted out the wires and the fuse again. So luckily we're going down to Tyler and we're gonna fix it once and for all. Uh, we're just gonna cap those two things, but really I don't know why it has those 90 degree bend things on there because they, are, they don't stay in the pipe. Um, so I can see this happening to a lot of other people too. Um, so should be a simple fix, but right now we have no wide bands. We got like nine check engine lights again. Um, and it's not the car's fault, it's the, the crappy uh, connection on the rear O2 sensors, but we're gonna fix it once for all. We're gonna cap those and um, get those welded off and then replace a fuse. Tyler pulling the car up on the lift. It is pouring. Almost yeah, it's just a really poor design on that thing. Yep. So we're gonna take those pieces of shit out. Okay. There it goes. There it goes. Yep. And then this one, I just put this in last night just as a temporary. And it's hot down already. Yeah, it's pretty much. Because there, there's no, um, there's like no threads. Is there an MIL inhibitor for this thing? It, it's, it's turned off. It is? Okay. Yeah. So, so I don't need the sensor. Okay. Got you. So, so what yeah, you just close the holes off. Yep, just close the holes off, um, and then all I'm gonna do right here, just unplug, fix this so it doesn't short out again. Throw this in the trash, Sweet. and then we just need to find a, uh, a mini fuse for it. Throw that in the trash too. Okay, or no, whatever. You don't keep it? No. That's still in here. It's trash. That's trash too. So we don't have very good lighting under here because close the door. But this right here shorts out the basically a whole big fuse for the car for all the sensors so once we get this uh those holes closed up underneath we're gonna go ahead and uh, replace the fuse up top it's pretty easy to get to all right gonna get this welded up here real quick Like a mini fuse. What size? Ten or twenty. Okay. Maybe fifteen. Alright. All right. And we should be good to go. No more issues. Wells look pretty good too. So I don't remember the exact fuse, but we're looking on here. I believe it was just vehicle power one. Uh, it should be a 20 amp fuse. That's right in here. Yeah, see this one that's different color? One, it's one of these. Okay. Because I replaced it already before when the other one broke. Okay. So I just pull one of those out and it'll be blown to hell. Is this one? Yeah. Yep, that's the one. Affirmative. Should be it yeah it's just those those two wires they crossed each other and it zaps that, that. <laughs> and that runs camshaft position sensors it, it runs everything nine codes off of just that one fuse 
They got that title. Yep. Luckily, I already had this problem, so I know exactly what I needed. Heck yeah. All right, just like that, we're all set. Huge thanks to uh, Tyler and Josh here, getting the car straightened out. Mr. Nicholas, we're all set. Bye, Mr. Nick. Stop by Ice Cold Air and Muffler, mess with Nick. What? <laughs> he didn't hear me, it's okay, he'll hear it later. It is storming. Holy Moses. Yeah. Give her a quick start. Oh yeah. I might still have the check engine lights on. Yeah, yep. set them right. Yeah, just gonna delete those check engine lights. Hello? Hello? I'm clearing my codes. Clear all codes. No DCTs. Okay. And my wide bands should be back on. We'll see. Yeah. Boom. Yep. Booyah. Wide bands are back. We good to go. Cool. <laughs> All right. So, if you want to come visit Mr. Stockish, Aaron Muffler, Ice Cold Aaron Muffler, aka Barnes Performance. Yeah. You can, you can prank call this guy. I'd rather you not. <laughs> All right, I'll see you later, man. See you, man. Later. It's a good thing we don't have cup twos on the car. Thank God. We're yeah. Ditch somewhere. Four S's. I mean, we're going right about the speed limit, and um, we're doing pretty good in the rain. Um, it hasn't been sketchy really at all. So, Michelin Pilot Four S's are really, really good tires. The cup twos are great for cornering, but this is a really good all-around tire. And yes, the Shelby is now ruined. It's seen rain. Yep, it's raining. Yeah. And it's ruined, man. Ruined. Part out. <laughs> so we're going to head back. Um, we should have somewhere around 120, 130 miles on the clutch by the time we get back. Just been shifting back and forth in the gears and stuff. So should be uh, getting close to getting the clutch.